Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Young Preach, a.k.a. Past the Magic. And today, after I don't know how long, like maybe a month, I've been saying I'm going to do this tech deck for you guys. But it's finally here, my green, red, uh, Heart of Salmon. That's what I'm deciding to call it. Uh, it's called the Heart of Salmon. And you're going to figure out why. It's a real cool combo that, uh, like I mentioned in a, a past video, I uh, went to my local FNM store one Friday night, played this deck. I only played it twice. The first time I went two and two. And the next week, the following week, I went four and oh with a few minor changes. And um when I say I went four and oh, it definitely wasn't an easy uh victory. I went against blue black scarab guys. I went against teamer energy and a couple of uh you know creative homebrew decks you know what i'm saying so when i said i went four and oh it definitely wasn't a walk in the park and if it was i probably wouldn't be doing this video but it is definitely good enough competitive enough for me to actually make this video to you guys what's going on so you know you guys might want to go ahead and uh you know jot this down in your notes you know what i'm saying so uh no further ado i'm gonna go ahead and start with uh creatures uh, and sorry, I apologize. That's my first real tech deck, so um, you know, just bear with me here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start with the uh, lower end creatures. I got Green Belt, uh, Rampager, three copies of that, four copies of Servant of the Conduit, four copies of Volcano, uh, Volcanic Brawler, and four copies of Heart of Curing. Now, before you guys mention. Um, I know it, it is a something like a legendary rule. You only play th three copies of a card if it's legendary. But with this combo, I promise you, you definitely want four. Because we already know Heart of Curing is an issue. And, you know, that night that I played Heart of Curing, every single game, every single matchup, and my opponent's first priority was to get rid of the Heart of Curing. And I cannot stress this enough. Every time they abraded it, uh, Fatal pushed it, every time I played another Heart of Cure in the next turn, the look on my opponent's face was just like, OMG. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Again, I got to deal with this again. And once you kind of see the combo that I have going on here, uh, you'll understand why I need four copies of Heart of Cure. So, um Start with the Green Belt Rampager. Um, this card here, I would like to substitute it uh, with Ronis, um, the God card, you know, Ronis, um, only because it'd be a more valuable three drop. Uh, Rampage is good. It just, you know, costs two energies to play it, and I really kind of want to save energies for my Hydra which I'm going to get to later. But and since this is kind of, I mean, it's not a budget deck, but it definitely could get more expensive with Ronis. So I just kind of settled for, you know, Green Belt, Rampanger, 3-4 for a one drop, pay two energies. He could kind of get himself out eventually. So, you know, it wasn't too bad. And it, and it can cure the, uh, crew the heart of curing. So it definitely wasn't too hard to find a substitute for Ronis. So I put three copies of that because it eats up too much energy sometimes. So um, three copies of that, four copies of Servant of the Conduit. Anytime that you're playing an energy type package, it seems like Servant of the Conduit is a a must play set of. You know, I don't, I shouldn't have to go into detail on why four uh, helps you. Uh, you know, mana ramp. It's a two two great body for a two drop. You know what I'm saying? Plus you get two energies, so which will also help. Our next creature, a uh, Volcanic Brawler. Uh, imagine Double Strike, Trample, a 4-3. Just for a 2-drop. It's a nightmare. I would say probably Brawler is probably my third win condition. If I don't have Heart of Curing out there, if I don't have Glory Bringer or Hydra, I would say Volcanic Brawler, 4-3, Double Strike, and Trample is 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 nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? So... Got to play four copies of that, nothing less. Definitely can't play more, of course, but uh, four copies is good enough. Um, like I said, four hearts of curing. Um, 
what I kind of don't see a lot, and I've been playing Magic for about 10 months now, but from what I've seen, a lot of people don't like to abuse that second ability of Heart of Curing. Besides the Flying and Vigilance Crew 3, uh, you can take down your Planeswalker to crew the Heart of Curing. I've seen it with Gideon with the, you know, um, the Mardu vehicles, red, white type build. And that was pretty cool. But I never seen it outside of Gideon. So, you know, with the help of my big cousin, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my homie. Um, it is just a match made in heaven. You know what I'm saying? You'll 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 see it. So we're gonna move on to the next set. Uh we got four copies of Blistering Hydra. Uh four copies. Yes, four copies of Samit the Tested. And three copies, one in the cyborg, maybe. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, three copies of Glorybringer. Now, Hydra, once again, if you're playing an energy package, it seems like Hydra is a must of. Um, at first, I only had three Hydras and four Glorybringers, but um, with the help of Servant, you can get Hydra out there. Turn three, turn four, get Samit, turn five, Glorybringer. So I think that's kind of beautiful, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's a lot easier to get Hydra out there than it is Glorybringer. You know, I mean, you know, just with that one mana, sometimes that one mana does make a difference. You know what I'm saying? So, and plus Hydra is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, pay three energies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Hydra. And for the end, until the end of turn, it gains Hexproof. Trust me, that Hexproof... Is is no joke, you know what I'm saying? So I had to put four copies. Uh Glorybringer, only three copies, and you'll see why. But um Glorybringer on his own is just amazing. A four 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 five drop. Um uh, instant removal, flying haste, like it's it's nothing else that needs to be added to this. You know what I'm saying? So um but let's get to uh Salmon. I don't know if it's a he or she, but you know, we're not going to argue about the sex of this card. <laughs> but Samit, um, her first ability, or her plus one uh, ability is up to one target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Now, if you don't know what double strike does, please pause this video. Go ahead and Google it and read about that because this double strike is no joke. If you give double strike to, let's say, Greenbelt. You're just hitting your opponent for six. Uh, like I said, uh, Brawler, Double Strike, that's eight plus Trample. So that means you'll be able to trample over any chump bro uh, blockers, uh, hit them for damage with that, and then swing again for four. That's beautiful. And and uh, Heart of Curing. This is, this is the magical combo that won me every single match that night, and I guarantee you it's going to win me more. You have Heart of Curing out and Salmon. Go go ahead and tick it down one, crew to heart. Tick it up one, double strike. That's eight in the air. Nine out of ten is going to be uncontested because you know, it's not a lot of flying creatures out there. But if, if, if it is flying creatures, chump blocking this, it's not going to last long. Eight in the air is nothing to play with. So just having those two out on the field... And, you know, one of my concerns was I would never get to tick up Samet to her ultimate. But by the time I was really concerned about that, I was already winning the game. Because not a lot of people can contest, you know, double strike swinging in the air. You know what I'm saying? Like, even a glory bringer couldn't handle that. So, that's, that's you know... Why I would want to play four copies of Salmon, four copies of Heart of Kieran, because when people see that combo on the field, they're going to do everything in their power to get those, or both of them, or one of the two off the field. So that's why it's always good to go ahead, put four copies, so when they get rid of your Heart of Kieran with a uh, Fatal Push or a Braid, or get rid of your uh, Salmon with, you know, damage, you know, shock or whatever, you can go ahead next turn. Pay for another salmon or pay to another heart of curing because this that is the bread and butter of this deck. That's <laughs> nine out of ten is what's gonna instantly win you the game. Besides Sam's uh uh ultimate here. 
But her minus two is pretty decent too. It's it's it, it kind of saved me a couple times, but you know it's not really something to hoot and holler for. But minus two, Samit the tested deals two damage divided as you choose amongst one or two target creatures and or players. So if you're playing against the uh, uh, the ramen up red deck, this would be brutal because most of the creatures' toughness is one or two. You know what I'm saying? So this would just easily just wipe their board or you can uh kind of just set it up to where you know you attack with somebody um you know they got a five creature you hit them with green belt so now they're down to two and on your second main phase you can go ahead minus two salmon and finish them off i've done that a couple times so you know you can kind of play with that a little bit but you know it's not definitely gonna get you out of trouble when you really need it you know what i'm saying so uh the minus two ability is pretty cool but her minus seven, which is none of, <laughs> which is not a joke. That's why I added three glory bringers just for this. It says search your library up for uh for up to two creatures and or planeswalker cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So one time I had salmon on the field and I had uh a salmon in my hand. I went ahead and uh Sacrificed my salmon, uh, did the minus seven ability, um, took out two glory bringers onto the field for free, and then played a salmon from my hand, gave one of them double strike, hit my opponent for 12. Now, you can't tell me <laughs> that that's not brutal. You know what I'm saying? So, if you know how to build around uh, a planeswalker like salmon, it could definitely be a game over, you know, <laughs> play style, you know what I'm saying, type deck. So that's why I'm running four Samets and three Glory Bringers. I mean, it's, it's five mana. I'm running 23 lands uh, in this deck with four Atuma Ether. So getting Glory Bringer out turn five, sometimes six, is no big, big deal, you know what I'm saying? So. Let's go ahead and move to the other uh, spells. We have four abrades, three harness lightnings, and a play set of attunement ethers. Now, with these cards, there's really nothing to explain. I mean, they're pretty kind of uh, self-explanatory. Tuning ethers helps you uh, helps you with the energy and um, finding a land when you really need it especially running two colors you definitely want your lands when you need it and how you need it you know what i'm saying so uh really self-explanatory i'm running 23 lands so running four of these is pretty simple you know what i'm saying uh three harness lightnings plays off the energy uh you got servant of the conduit uh brawler hydra uh ether hub so i mean it's real easy to hit up uh, a creature that's eight toughness and be able to deal with it you know what i'm saying so you know i run three copies of those i might run four and just three braids but i don't know we'll see um and just like i said four braids uh since it's really a lot of artifact type deck builds that i've been seeing especially online uh running four braids is uh definitely no struggle uh I just love it. You can do three damage to target creature, which can handle a lot of creatures in standard, or destroy artifact. So if they decide to pull a gear hulk out there, guess what? It's done, dead, gone with uh nothing to be seen, you know what I'm saying? So it's real simple to uh play four copies of that. So let's go on to the lands here. All right. So I am running four copies of your rootbound Craig, 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 whatever. Uh, four copies of your Ether Hubs, two copies of Oasis, and two copies of Ramonet Ruins. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but whatever. <laughs> um, pretty simple. Um, I played this deck online, similar kind of. And I just made sure, you know, I played it five, six, seven, twenty 20 times, you know what I'm saying? So with this, um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, and <laughs> uh, five mountains and six forests. So with that build, um, you shouldn't have no issues with land drops whatsoever. 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe, no, nah, not even a, a if and or maybe. So with this setup, if you do, do decide to build this setup, just use that land. You're not going to have any issues. Should be good to go. Um, only two copies of Raminet Ruins in Oasis. Oasis saved me one game. I was able to pay two green, one colorless, sacrifice that desert, put a 3-3 on uh, Heart of Curin, and Double Strike. So that's 14 in the air. So, I mean, maybe you want three Oasis and one ramming up ruins i don't know but you know it's just really good because you don't want to be killing yourself paying for green so i think two copies is enough it's just like your backup you know just in case stuff gets a little fishy out there you know what i'm saying you you got that on the field you know what i'm saying so just two copies of each now we're gonna go to the sideboard um it really took me a long time to kind of set this up. Um, it can always change just depending on how I feel, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But this is my setup that I have so far. I have a play set of Her Heroic Intervention, a play set of Appetite for the Unnatural, play set of Blossoming Defense, and three copies of Kari's Expertise. First off, let me explain why I got three copies of the expertise. Is my biggest issue learning uh, this from playing Black Blue Scarab Guy is green and red really has no answer for uh, indestructible creatures. Since rotation, there was burn from within, probably a couple of other red spells. But other than that, now everything rotated, there's really nothing to handle indestructible creatures. I think that was the hardest match I've ever had in my 10 months of playing. So I made sure that that's not going to happen again. So I played three copies. So, you know, if they do decide to play Scarab Guy, guess what? It's mine for a turn. Maybe give it double strike. I don't know whatever happens happens but i just don't want it on that field for that one turn so that means i don't have to make that one turn count you know what i'm saying so that's why i put three copies in the sideboard it's definitely not a main board card or well, at least for this build but sideboard yes perfect uh four copies of blossom of defense i mean it's really self self-explanatory if you're running against a burn type uh, removal deck you want to keep your main pieces safe, Heart of Kieran, uh, Brawler, uh, Glorybringer, you know what I'm saying, just those key pieces safe with the hex proof. Or you can just give Heart of Kieran or Brawler plus two, plus two, and double strike. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and end the game early. Uh, just whatever you, you need it, I'm pretty sure Blossoming Defense is going to be there for you. So four copies of that in the sideboard. Um... Definitely don't want to run it in the main board only because, at least at my store, uh, the meta there seems to be a lot more aggro mid range. So I kind of want to just kind of clear the board while I'm swinging with double strike. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's in the sideboard and not in the main board. But you can always switch it out for a, a braid, maybe. You know what I'm saying? So kind of de uh, depends on what you want. Four copies of Appetite for the Unnatural. Uh, it's just my backup for enchantments and artifact builds that I'm going against. Online, I've been seeing a lot of black-white tokens, um, the uh, God's Feral Gifts, you know what I'm saying? Just those really annoying enchantments or artifacts. Go ahead, get them off the board, and gain two life. Win the game, you know what I'm saying? If you can kind of destroy their engine that they're trying to build... Go ahead, destroy their deck, and count that as a free win. You know what I'm saying? So having four copies of that and four copies of a braid, I think you should be able to accomplish that. And, of course, you have Heroic Intervention. Uh, I will add that with the Blossom of Defense. Uh, go ahead and take out the four braids, the three Harness Lightnings, throw those in. For the real heavy control removal you know, type builds that you're going to be going against out there. Um, everything uh, 
hex proof and indestructible and this is one thing that i learned also like i said i've been playing 10 months so i might sound like a rookie here but um if somebody decides to fumigate your board go ahead and play heroic intervention it's a two drop instant speed gets all your creatures hex proof and indestructible and with that indestructible none of your creatures will die to fumigate i didn't know that till that friday night you know what i'm saying so I think running four copies of that against a blue-white approach of the Second Sun type build where they're constantly fumigating and and board wiping your, your board with uh, Bantu's Last Reckoning, you know what I'm saying? Um, that indestructible ability is going to save your behind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This will give uh, Hexproof and Indestructible to Salmon, to your Heart of Curing when it's a, an, an artifact and not a creature. Uh, this would give your lands everything, including yourself. You know what I'm saying? No, oh, no. Yeah, you gain control. No, not yourself. Sorry. Uh, Rick and move right there. <laughs> but, yes, with that with, with that knowledge in mind, when I'm going to get some control decks, especially blue-white seems to be real popular nowadays, you want that, that indestructible on, in your side pocket. You know what I'm saying? You definitely want that, so... That is definitely my sideboard there. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the video. It's my first real tech deck type build. I was a little hesitant because, you know, I just want to build and, sh and, and present a competitive deck. And now that I went 4-0 with this deck, I think it was a proper time to go ahead and uh, share it to the world. You know what I'm saying? So um go ahead and subscribe you know what i'm saying like i always say don't be a weenie subscribe you see your boy only got five subscribers you know what i'm saying let's get up to six this week you know what i'm saying and uh go ahead and like this video uh leave some comments down below if you kind of like what i did if you have some sus uh, substitutions that you would do or you just don't like it at all go ahead give me a thumbs down i'm cool with that also because if you're listening to this part that means Hey, that's good for me. <laughs> so, once again, it's your boy Young Preach, also known as Pastor Magic. So, I will see you guys.